Hello, you're in the car with Mrs. Wigton waiting for my son Ezra to um, finish his ballet class and so we are hanging out downtown. You never know what you're going to hear or see around here, <laughs> but um, in Salem, Oregon. All right, so right now we're going to um, dive in and use this quiet time, Maisie. <laughs> I said quiet time um, to uh, look at exploring creation with physical science module 11 um, physics electricity and magnetism we should get to the first half of it or almost half of it and uh, we're on page 330 let's look at this um, so there's this guy named James Clerk Maxwell um, <clears throat> he was born in 1831, homeschooled until college, and uh, when he was 14, he wrote an essay on geometric curves, um, was admitted, I'm just going to summarize this for you, admitted to Edinburgh University in Scotland at age 16, um, based on that uh, very uh, essay. And um, later, he just outgrew Edinburgh University and went on to Cambridge University and later was teaching there and teamed up as a teacher with Michael Faraday, who was the dude who invented the generator and transformer. And the two of them together made great advances in electricity and magnetism. At age 42, um, Maxwell wrote a book <clears throat> proving that electricity and magnetism are governed by the same force. It was called the, um, Maxwell's Equations. That's the name of his book. Um, he invented the kinetic theory of matter. This looks like a whole bunch of cursive. I'm sorry, and messy at that. Um, but I want to read it to you, which explains the behavior of matter of all types under almost any set of circumstances. He also explained how we see in color, and made the first color photograph. What? He's often to refer, referred to as the founder of modern physics and ranked among Albert Einstein and Sir Isaac Newton as the, in the top three of the most important scientists in history. How about that? That was who? James Clerk Maxwell. That guy. Very impressive. All right. So after um, completing experiment 11.1, um, <clears throat> What are the two rules of electrical charges? Well, like charges repel one another. They, um, boing away from each other. We're like, woo, get away. And opposite charges attract one another. You can see they just, um, these opposites attract. That's where they get that from right there. If this is a better arrow, I decided to do it more like this. This is much better. <laughs> so obviously the, we got the positive and the negative attracting. These repelling, boing, Boing. Yeah, no good. All right, we don't want that. Um, so, how does the text explain? This my pinky again, like that. All right, how does the text explain what you saw in the experiment about the way the force between electrically charged particles changes under different conditions? Well, um, in the we did an experiment in our um, challenge one class where um, we rubbed balloons on our hair and um, had one hanging and without even touching it it um, the, the two balloons repelled away from each other and um, so actually both balloons were rubbed on the hair so um, they were both negatively charged and so we had that re repelling going on all right page 331 <clears throat> what is the force between electrically charged particles behave almost what does it behave almost identically to gravitational force only difference is a gravitational force is always attractive and never repulsive um, and second electrical charges are stronger in force than in, um, than gravity and so um, so there's two differences but otherwise they behave the same way the two differences are this is um, gravitation gravity is um, only attractive never um, never repel repelling and um, electrical charges are way way stronger gravity me a little bit strong but not that strong okay so let's move on three principles that govern electromagnetic force so these must be important anytime they have three principles or two principles whatever it is to highlight that these are important you want to know these all electric charges attract or repel one another. The force between two charges is, um, charged objects is directly proportional 
uh, I told you we we're going to use that a lot, <laughs> to the amount of charge on each object. So as one goes up, the other one goes up too. And finally, the force between two charged objects is inversely proportionate to the square of the distance between them. <clears throat> this one is a little mind-blowing for me. It's just something that you need to reckon, like just um, <clears throat> um, recognize. I should have drawn an inversely portion proportionate um, um, diagram there. Oh, Maisie's coming up. Okay, you can come up, Maisie. Come and sit with Mommy in the front seat. Hop on up. <clears throat> All right, but so um, if it's um, inversely proportionate, the line would go this way. Um, it would be basically making an X on there. So directly proportionate goes this way, inversely proportionate goes this way, and that's what happens down here. Um, the force between two charge objects <clears throat> is inversely proportionate to the square of the distance between them. All right, that is beyond my understanding, but we're going to try to show a little bit of it. And hold on a second, I'm going to get adjusted here. All right, so need a little bit more. There we go. Sorry for the technical difficulties. There we go. What is meant by <clears throat> that thing that I just said that they, <laughs> that I, um, you can see above here? <clears throat> They're inversely proportional and proportionate to the square of the distance between them. Well, this is that pic picture I told you I wanted to draw. I it turns out I did it. Um, this, so something increases if something increased by a factor of four, like n. Um, and that means like um, that mean that means it's code for saying it multiplied by four. Something decreased by a factor of nine. That would be code for saying it just divided by nine. If that had been by four, it would have been four here. Um, <clears throat> factors or anything um, that can uh, be evenly multiplied into. Um, so like the, a factor of twenty five would be five. Um, it doesn't have to be the square root of it, though. Um, a factor of 20 might be would also be 5. So they would have that factor in common. Um, something increases by a factor, it's multiplication by it. And if it's decreasing by it, it's actually divi divided by it. Okay? Because it's all m multiplication and factoring like that. Um, or division. And so it's just going up and down on that. Um, so we've got um, two fields here that want to uh, tr uh, attract because they're different here but the farther away they are the weaker the force this makes sense to me the closer they are physically together the stronger the force I try to make that a really strong force there mathematicians have been able to quantify exactly how much stronger the force gets as the two poles get closer or farther apart <clears throat> So increase the distance by a factor of n, then um, the electromagnetic force, that's what Fe is here, decreases by n squared. So this is the mathematical piece of it. So we don't have to totally like conceptualize this um, visually, but you do need to understand as one go goes up, the other one goes down. And likewise, as this one goes down, the distance right here um, goes down. <clears throat> then the electromagnetic force increases, see how much stronger it gets, by the same um, number squared. Okay, so that's the uh, long and the short of that. Okay, so for the diagram below, use the blue arrow um, to point, oh, I didn't use colors at all, I didn't read this very well, did I? <clears throat> point out the direction of the force exerted on the red ball by the blue ball in addition to a red arrow. Oh heavens, so I just really failed you. Very <laughs> um, so um, let's see here. Um, we've got these two repelling away from each other. And um, so um, I drew them like this arrow here, but I remember checking myself in the answer key and these arrows, this is where they put the arrows. They're like, they go out, they go away. And so that's what's happening there. And so, um, um, and then here we have those opposites attracting. I believe this would have been the red um, force and this would be the blue arrow on its force on that one. All right, um, 11.2. We have, we're on page 333 in the student notebook. 
um, two charged particles are placed 16 centimeters from each other and the resulting force is measured by what happens to the elect electric force when the following situations occurred. Charge on an object one is halved. No way. Um, so um, the answer is the electric force is also halved. Um, okay, and the charge on object two is divided by four. Well, the, elect the electromagnetic force is also divided by four. <clears throat> now, the distance between the objects is reduced to four centimeters. Well, then the electric magnetic force is 16 times stronger because they got closer together, right? So it would be, um, we already had the, um, the 16 centimeters. Well, what is a factor of that? Well, it would be, um, be four squared, 16 times stronger. All right, what, of all these situations, if all of them occurred simultaneously, how would the new force compare to the old force? So you have the electromagnetic force divided by two, divided by four, Four, why does it look like that? Times 16 um, equals 2 times as strong. Oh, this is all the math behind it, but this is the answer right here. It's just 2 times as strong. It's twice as strong. <clears throat> so, um, because this ends up being divided by 8, 8 is half of 16, and um, when you, um, oh, let's see here. I'm going to get mixed up, but um, this is, <laughs> this the 16 is up here so we've got um, twice as much um, going on I think this is the inversely thing so I'm going to move on from that I read you the answers <laughs> this is as good as I can do sometimes <laughs> all right so we're on page 334 sometimes Mrs. Wigton gets it really well and sometimes she doesn't um uh, photon. Remember the photons are little tiny packages of light energy and they also act like a particle. All right, so how do photons, um, how are they responsible for the light we see coming from a light bulb? Um, well, electromagnetic force, electromagnetic force is produced through the exchange of photons. Um, they repel like charges and attract oppositely charged um, particles in a light bulb heat first this is the the long and the short of it right down here heat happens first it's generated and then that makes the electrons in the filament move around and when those electrons move in certain ways they no longer need to exchange as many photon as many photons with their positively charged partners so extra photons are ejected and hit our eyes as visible white light Okay, so um, in a typical um, uh, light bulb, we're seeing extra photons um, just get it, hitting our light eyes because um, um, they, they're no longer needed, to, needing to exchange so many back and forth. And so there's extras coming out. Um, but it, any time there's an exchange, um, a, con a connection, um, or exchange of, of, um, of electrons of any sort, um, there is um, the potential for light or heat. So let's look at this right here. A black object is heated until it glows with a nice orange-yellow glow. If the black object has no electrical charge, where does the light come from? Well, here it is. Um, it's from the interaction of the charged particles. So we're, we would we'd be seeing light from the interaction of protons and electrons in the object. So just that interaction makes light. But sometimes there's even um, extra um, there there's extra extra electro electrical charges. I can't talk. Maybe it's because I'm distracted by the giant truck leaving beside me. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right. So 336, we're on. Um, electric charge. Um, what is an electric field? Use the image to explain. 
Um, so we've got um, a positively charged um, atom here and a, a negatively charged one here. And um, so we've got the electrical field is the field is the space around it. You can see the field lines. And um, <clears throat> the closer that those lines are together, the stronger they are. And the further away they apart they are, the, 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 um, the weaker they are. Okay? Likewise for this. But these are negatively charged and these are positively charged. Okay? Okay, um, page 337. What is static electricity? I always just think of those balloons getting rubbed on your hair and in your hair standing up. It is the buildup of electrical charges within or on the surface of a material. Three ways charge can be transferred. Okay, one, two, three. They're here and they're not too overwhelming, so stay with me. All right, charging by friction. So that's the rubbing the balloon on your hair. Um, you can walk on carpet with socks or jumping on a trampoline in socks if it's dry. And all of those can make your hair stand on the end because of electrons from one surface are transferred through friction to the other surface. Cool, huh? So friction. There's some friction. All right, excuse me. All right, charging by conduction. This is to touch something already electrically charged. Oh, of course, there's a picture. I thought I had these. Let me pause and get your picture. All right, so this is charging by conduction. Um, something that's already charged, you touch it, and it charges you. So how about that? If you haven't gotten to ever touch one of those things, it's pretty crazy just to know how much um, electrical energy is going through your body. That's called a Van de Graaff generator. All right, um, so there's the last one. It's charging by induction. And this is when you don't even make physical contact. It looks like they're touching it, but they're not um, because that's the idea of induction is that there's not actual physical contact. You get close um, and it zaps you before it even, you even touch it because um, there's enough um, charge in the field around the object. Um, so that is... Um, charging without direct contact is induction okay <clears throat> so you can see that there's there's the, the negatively and the positively and yeah it's just a big uh, this is why this is charged and then you're bringing in another um, conflict here and so zap all right so um, but remember no no um, Touching has happened there. Oh, of course, there's pictures of, I've been telling you what, there's pictures right here, and I never even had to get the whole book out. How about that? All right, so um, here's the definitions. I got these backwards. They wanted the definitions up there under vocabulary, and I wrote the examples. And now they want the, um, the examples, and I wrote the vocabulary um, definitions. So there you go. Friction is rubbing two things together, and one transfers electrons to the other. Isn't she cute? And charging by conduction, it's touching something already charged. Um, something I'd like to point out with this one is that, if I can get my book to stay where it should do, stay book, stay, stay, we're slipping, um, is that this is goes from negative charge to negative charge or positive charge to positive charge. It's the same charge flowing through you, okay? That's conduction. Induction is charging without direct contact, but it's also um, <clears throat> it's changing the charge from um, um, positive to negative. It's a, it's a um, transferring of different um, opposite um, charges there, okay? So if you want to give an object a positive charge, but the only source of charge you have is negative, would you charge it by conduction or induction? Well, you want the opposite, you better use induction, okay? Because that's what I was just telling you. This is the induction, changes the charge, okay? Conduction does not change the charge. All right. I think that's where we're going to stop today. Um, that is short and sweet and to the point. So um, we will do... Um, look at our electrical circuits next time. Thanks for joining me. Take care.